Hello, you're watching Artist Rap. Conversations with musicians, artists, and creative people. We will share stories, concepts, life, and music. We hope these unique insights and topics will enrich your day. I'm your host, Ali Jackson. It's so funky. We are also known as the Yes Trio. So I find that it's a, it's a good time to, to use our technology to connect and reconnect and just talk about life and music. COVID-19, post-COVID-19, uh, and, and just to reconnect to, to all of those who uh, are optimistic and positive about the music continuing to have a healing effect on humanity. So welcome, brothers. Hey, thank you, Ali. Nice to see y'all, y'all. Yes, yes. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Man, how, how you holding up? Where Where are you, Omer? Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York City, uh, near where I live. Uh, yeah, been here basically. You know, nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron, and where Where are you, Aaron? I'm in Boston, my hometown where I grew up. Uh, been chilling with my family last couple of weeks, and uh, life is good. Life is sunny. We had, we had a little bit of a rough spring here. It's cold and rainy for like six weeks. Now that the sun is out, life is life is good. Awesome. So, so how how have you guys been um, uh, keeping your 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 thoughts? energized uh during this you know quarantine global quarantine i guess i, I guess i'm gonna take that one <laughs> uh, well uh, you know to be totally honest uh for me personally came at a good time personally just i've been on the move a lot this past year like a kind of insane amount even even for us and i've been kind of going non-stop since last summer so it was nice for me at least at the beginning to have a chance to just stop moving and um, reflect a little bit and of course it's been it's been devastating for the world it's been devastating for our country. It's been devastating for New York City. It's been devastating for some masters of the music that we've lost, and, and you know, all of us in the in the music community. It's been rough just losing so many people, and I've had a lot of friends that've been sick. So, you know, I've been I've been suffering in that sense, but just personally, time wise, it's been great um, to have a chance to just. Uh, you know, stop the rat race and uh, read and play the piano and, and talk to friends, catch up with people chat on a human level and, uh, and try to engage with society on a human level, not just a music level. So, uh, you know, in terms of like staying positive, I see this as an opportunity. You know, I, I think you have to try to take any crisis and turn it into an opportunity. And our, our country has never been in such bad shape in my lifetime, you know, the political situation is worse than I've ever seen it. I didn't, I never imagined we could get to this point. So uh, this is a mirror on our society. It's a, it's a window into all the problems that we have, and it's an opportunity to try to come together and fix them as best we can, at least move in a positive direction. So that, that keeps me positive and also uh, just the sun <laughs> and getting some exercise and, uh, and of course, great music friends nice sounds good for me it's similar and different i i'm now starting to feel like what aaron is mentioning the uh there's obviously everybody's you know within this chaos and um, insane situation you find that the time that is uh, so valuable you know to reflect and uh, you realize that you just you have yourself and the people that are very close to you. But it started as a shock for sure because I was onto many, many things, uh, including developing my place of music in uh, Brooklyn, uh, 
a few businesses uh, that I have and, and music in general. It basically it was pretty devastating on a personal uh, business development level. Um, and I basically have to work all the time, more than ever, to, to, to keep it going. So I'm experiencing more as a business owner. Um, but it's fine, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter, you know, things come and go, I'm aware of that, so it's not, not, nothing tragic. Um, it did change my, the way I see music making and, you know, everything that we take for granted, you know, playing, touring, uh, planning, you know, the whole idea of musical career that I've always had a, a strange or a different type of relationship with that concept. You know, I've taken a few breaks in my life uh, intentionally. And uh, it kind of feels like another one. It feels like on the personal level um, and music making, I'm basically by myself. So I'm, I'm composing a lot. I'm, I'm less, I'm less, I'm planning, I'm not planning anything basically. And I realize I'm, in a way I kind of take it as maybe it'll, it'll never come back, you know? Maybe I don't have a, this life any longer of just uh, traveling and playing with people and being on stage. In some moments I'm very, very, I'm, I miss it immensely on a very basic human level. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's my favorite thing to do, but at the same time, like I started the garden you visited with my uh, partner in my business, uh, which is, you know, basically built a whole vegetable and beautiful garden in two months wow. in, in Queens on a, one of the lots that we have. And uh, one of the best, one of the best thing I could have done. So I've been learning how to work with, uh, you know, like a little bit of, you know, primitive construction, um, planting and these kind of things, you know what I mean? And just, just thinking that the, I have a feeling that things are going to be different if I want or not, whatever we think, you know, things are going to be different. Um, so kind of getting into a different mode, like maybe we'll have something, maybe not, just enjoying the moment. Um, at the beginning, it was much harder. Now it's, I'm getting more used to it and I have basically no plans and obviously no need to discuss what's going on out there. Is, we all see it. Um, but I think that as a musician, if you want to focus uh, or the conversation on, I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's a different time, you know, it's definitely a different time. But um, like Aaron said, but it took me a while to get there, to get to the more, to get more inside and realize that basically all coming back to, to what you do with your life and um, I do I started connecting with people slowly I mean it's, it seems like going to be a very slow build maybe it's positive maybe there are some things that you know life is just more basic you know you take the basic things not for granted and try to build you know maybe something like that can you uh, can you tell me or tell us about the, the garden tell us about the garden what, what's happening with the garden so the garden is, uh, well, we, we own this uh, small house in Queens near Wilson Live, which is a uh, music studio, which also stopped completely, and, but it's fine. Um, it was basically a garden, like it's not a big lot, tw maybe 25 by uh, 80, quite big for a city. And at the back of it, there's a train, a freight train line. So it, it feels like you're out in the country. Ali was there. It was basically full of garbage, and my, my business partner at Wilson, Yoav, is a, he's kind of a farmer, you know, he has a place, has a few places, and he, that's his dream. So once it started, we were, he was, basically, we started working, and I brought my son, Zohar, and uh, just working, you know, and you realize that it's very intuitive, you know, planting, <laughs> working the ground, piles of, huge piles of garbage, hours on hours, just trying to just make it into something. And if I'll send you a photo now, I mean, it's unbelievable, you know? So I, I kind of, I'm a student, you know? And I, uh, it's my first time, so, but I see him planting and I plant also, and uh, we're building with bricks, you know, primitive structures. 
Um, it just was a very, uh, and, and then I'm dealing with business, you know, then, you know, uh, which was very, very tough. And uh, just trying to relax into the, the uh, that kind of feeling. But the, yeah, I, it, it made me want to do more of it, like get bigger plots of lands and, and uh, I see, and it uh, just relaxes you, you know, it relaxes you. It's more about just, oh, this is where food comes from. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, you're, you're muted, Ali. You're muted, Ali. What I wanted to ask you guys both, um, what I find extremely interesting is that this time for people that are musicians, and I want to go a little more in depth beyond the surface, is that we grew up with a certain, I, I guess you could call it the old school way of learning music. I mean, we did go to music schools. However, our real education was apprenticing with other great musicians and being around serious musicians and actually playing music. So playing music is very different or, or learning it and developing on a bandstand and playing for people than kind of this new paradigm shift. I mean, partly because of the pandemic, but also because of that educational experience you know people go to a music school now and then they, they go for four years regardless of their level it's like okay they've arrived um as you both know you never really arrive you're just constantly working on your music however we do not have venues and because we don't have you know the same audience or, or audiences in general now who knows when that comes back um, you know, I, I noticed like Omer, you're, you're more involved in other businesses and other things, definitely from an economic perspective, Aaron, I'm sure you're involved with other things, uh, philanthropic, cultural, social, uh, where, where do you think this is going for real musicians, people that play acoustic instruments in the small groups, where, where is this, where is this going? Interesting. I, I, I will, you know, I, I'll go out there on a limb and say that uh, I actually believe that things will not change forever in any large way. I think that we are in a moment where we're in a limbo, we're in a transition because for the simple reason, we don't have a vaccine. You know, we don't have a vaccine for COVID. We don't even have a really good treatment for COVID. And everybody's afraid to congregate in, in large numbers even outdoors, but I think that will, I think that will um, slowly change, not completely, but that will, I think you'll see maybe the beginning of some outdoor concerts. Greg Hutchinson is playing in two days in, in Rome in a small jazz club. You know, jazz clubs are already reopening in Europe. Yeah. For better or worse in small spaces. I think, you know, it's a, it's a, beautiful thing that people are trying to reopen and people need to hear music well it remains to be seen if you know audiences will come but i think you, you will have some concerts already happening uh in a new kind of way <laughs> maybe not in new york city and small clubs but in different parts of the world and hopefully outdoors even in the states and uh you will have a vac you know hopefully you will have a vaccine if not we will definitely have some treatments for covid then you know within a year and by next year middle of next year i think things will be not normal but moving back to to musicians normal i mean cats will start to tour again um and i, I think within two years it'll be kind of as we knew it before um i think people want to hear music musicians want to play music um we will return to touring you know, agencies have laid off a lot of people, but they will rehire some people and the industry will slowly um, build back up to how it was uh, you know, two years ago. So I, I'm not a total pessimist. I don't think this is the end of you know, music, jazz music industry as we know it. I think we're just, uh, we need to be patient and we need to recognize that without you know, health, we don't have any music and we don't have any audience. We don't have any musicians. So uh, the virus, you know, is ahead of us and we need to catch up to it. You know, we're losing this battle for a mixture of you know, political, socio-political and, and scientific reasons, but we're eventually gonna win. I mean, and uh, 
it is possible that we'll never have a vaccine. I mean, people have been trying for 30 years for an AIDS vaccine and there's no HIV vaccine. Nevertheless, there's amazing treatments. And so life has returned to semi-normal. Um, and I think we'll, we'll see the same with, with COVID. I think, yeah, we definitely will be the same. I mean, I don't think this will change everything in humanity completely, but we never know because things do change. I mean, if you consider technology and the, and the, the whatever people are into these days, yeah, I mean, I, I think things will change. Maybe it's not going to be as drastic, but um, I think the change is more in the, the way you feel about music. And maybe it's not only this situation. It's something that's been developing or building up for a long time. I don't think, Ali, this is something new that you're discussing. Yeah. I do think that, I mean, my feeling has been for a long time that we have to be much more independent and, and create our own situations, our own communities, uh, support each other, um, be able to basically produce whatever you need to produce without an, like outside help of uh, any kind of uh, business or an establishment um, as much as you can. And I still think that. And now I think that I'm just not sure how it's going to be. And I need to wait and see where New York is going because it's not only the, the virus. I don't know what's going on here exactly and how businesses are going to be back and how much of a destruction of the infrastructure we will have here, we'll experience here. And if I want to stay here, you know, and if it'll be even if I can sustain what I have. Uh, I still, I have a, a, I mean, I play every day and I, I started yesterday. We had a nice session with some people. Uh, and yeah, like Aaron said, I know in Israel in the one week, people are back to normal, gigs are happening. Um, I don't think people can stay away from each other. I mean, that's the essence of our being. It's not, uh, you know, people, you know, there's always be something you die from. But uh, yeah, we'll be back for sure. I'm not sure, though. I feel different, though. I don't, I'm not sure what I feel exactly, but I'm like, for example, I'm not like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can't really trust so much what's going on out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go personally more into self-sufficient, being self-sufficient than being able to play with my people and maybe not have a career at all, write music, maybe do, I don't know, I'm also not, I mean, I don't mind streaming, but it's not like my whole thing with music is to meet other people and create music in the room. I prefer to do that and not record and just record. Um, so I'm very much into live music. Uh, so I will just try to find the people who want to play with me and keep doing it, you know what I mean? So. It just becoming more basic, you know, more like when we were kids or something, you know, <laughs> or like, oh, you like playing? Oh, you want to play? Let's play. Oh, we can record it. Let's record it. Done, you know, next. Go go to the beach. I don't know. It's not so much about a planning of being a part of a whole structure of what the music business is. Doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, we really, never did in a way. But, um, but I feel it much more. But I, I'm like Aaron. I think things will slowly. You'll be. We'll be playing. I, I just think the taste is a little different. I can't. It'll take time to realize what it is exactly. But um, I'm definitely moving into more and more independent, quiet. Maybe I'll take a break. You know, from playing. I don't know. Not sure yet. Yes, Aaron. I was just going to say that I think uh, maybe what Omer's putting his finger on is that we're just more aware of the fragility of our existence, you know, uh, both our physical existence yeah. and our social existence and our, and our, and our professional existence. You know, we're, I think that that thing that has changed is that we, we are in a more primal state of being aware that we are mortal and that everything can fall apart. You know, a virus can take us all down. It took down our society, it took down our political system. You know, it took down our, our, our interrelations as humans. I mean, people 
some people have kind of like uh, gathered together with their loved ones and, and maybe they become even more mutually supportive, but you also have people that are very quick to lose their temper with each other and everyone's a little bit in the fight or flight mode. You know, the, the best parts of ourselves aren't necessarily coming out with each other. Um, so, you know, the, the civilization as we know it is a fragile thing. And just as our bodies are, are much more fragile than we normally take for granted. So, uh, I think that that has changed. So the background, you know, to everything that we do every day maybe has shifted as Omer said, but I think that personally, I think that's actually good because this was always the truth. You know, this was always the truth. And we, and we, as I said, we took it for granted. We, we basically, um, operate as if what we have is, um, forever and it's, it's, it's not, you know, <laughs> and so I, maybe it's good that we are, are more aware of that things about it for sure um you know if you yeah i mean just knowing you know you have to get to the basics you know you're you're, you're here for 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 a time on on earth and you want to do something with it positive and uh, you know it just makes you realize that uh, you know what you believe in more and what you need to do and who you want to do it with you know and less Less dealing with just superficial stuff, yeah, things, and uh, so yeah, my battery is gone. It's gonna be gone in a, a little bit. Sorry, so I'm walking towards uh, electricity. How are you feeling, Ali? What's your uh, anything changed? I mean, I mean, what I find really interesting, you guys have similar and different viewpoints. I've I've personally have given up on our system. Of, 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 of our particular construct um, yeah not working like the, the hope of it is it's like and so it's creating a whole vibe of anarchy distrust uh, distrust of people in positions of power or influence um so that has a huge impact on on society it has a huge impact on artists it has a huge impact on culture you know, people are all pretty much the same. Everyone's pretty much the same. Now, what makes us different could be geographic location, uh, economics, access to education, or, you know, what kind of quality of education that you have. But I feel like if we're back to children, like what Omer was saying, you're, you're curious, we're, we're curious. We wanna find out, we wanna be open, we wanna learn um, by, by nature. Um, and so for us as, as musicians and artists, having a platform to actually deliver the art or the people that are really vested in it and, and it be listened to, I feel like a lot of cultural shift that has been going on over the course of, I mean, years, especially with technology. So, you know, when we started playing together, us being on a video screen, being able to communicate and see each other in real time, just like a, just like a, a fantasy you know it wouldn't be <laughs> so with all that say with all that said what we do requires investment not not just from on the artist standpoint but from the listener standpoint like the first time you listen to train you just didn't get trained it wasn't like oh yeah i get what he's dealing with it's like no you know it, it requires some investment and i feel like the way the general audience or consumers of music in the world they're on a very primitive level and they actually don't listen. There's so much content being created every second that who can sift through all of that and discern what, you know, what does it mean and the levels of entry for everyone, it's almost infinite. So in terms of artists of a certain investment level and dedication, uh, there's not the kind of real estate or bandwidth to to you know it's difficult it's challenging it's kind of what omer said you kind of have to be independent on your own to create it i mean just our projects yes trio it's not like there's a whole bunch of support around it where we can say we pick and choose and do the kind of projects we want to do now we have been successful however there are other musicians that we love and admire and respect that is not so easy so, so at a time we're in a time 
where you know everything's everything's always changing. So it's not like anything's new that things don't there, there are new challenges and new times. I just feel like what the organic aspect of music or music creators and artists, it's at an all time like it's it's very fragile to put it in the using the adjective that, that Aaron so eloquently it's fragile. So um, I, don't know how, I don't know how that's prepared. I don't know how that how we improve how we improve it, but I do believe the the path is what Omer mentioned and what Aaron mentioned. We just have to continue doing what we're doing or what we believe in. And so, yeah, when we you know when we come across something in the world that's fragile that we value, you know whether it's a you know a shell or a, a, a living creature, a, you know a baby bird or 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 something that you know falls apart even in our house. Our instinct, if we you know if we don't value it, we just toss it. We we let it to the side. We move on with our life. If we do value it, we we. We repair it. We repair it, or we cherish it. We 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 heal it. You know, we we preserve it. We you know feed it. We nourish it until it can grow strong. You know, I don't think we have a choice. Uh, I think you know we love each other first of all. We live in a human community. We love this planet. We have a moral obligation, and we have just the instinct to try to save our planet from ourselves to heal our society from our on our own maleficent egg you know influence like it's there's a battle in our in our country and in the world in general between you know people that want to make this society better for the common good and people that are basically selfish and want to you know give themselves advantages over other people well, and, and, and preserve their advantages whatever those advantages are you know whether exactly. they're class advantages or race advantages or or gender advantages but you know so if we care about each other and we we care about um therefore the society because we care about each other as human beings we have an obligation to fix the system you know and and of course you have to start locally we know the most about our own system so we need to try to fix our own system but but the planet is shared by everybody so we also have a obligation to fix our home and preserve our home for the future. And, and that means becoming more politically involved and in my opinion, not turning our back and not giving up on um, the, the possibility of positive change. Now, giving up on the bullshit, you know, is, in, is, is important is a step towards trying to create a better society, you know, giving up on maybe some things that we had um, undue wrong faith in, you know, for example, like, can we assume that the police are going to you know protect us well no we cannot assume that i mean police protect certain people and kill other people <laughs> that, that are completely innocent so so is it time to you know to give up up our unjustified faith in our own you know police departments and try to like re to impose a, a retraining on all our all police departments so that this kind of shit doesn't happen again. Yes, it's it's necessary. It's needed, you know. But we can't just give up on say like the whole idea of having police because basically we'll end up in a free for all. You know, anarchy is not actually the system that we want because anarchy ends up being the domination of people with the biggest weapons. Um, and that's you know we don't want that. So, so we have an obligation. That's what I'm saying. It's funny that you say that because that's basically what it is. The people that have the the money, the influence, the power. They allow, I mean, they have, they have a lot of control. They have a lot of control. And the situation with the George Floyd murder by the hands of the police in Minneapolis, for somebody black, they grew up in a black city, for, for someone who, I mean, that identifies with the culture or, or in environments that black people are an extreme minority, that situation has been going on since black people were brought over here as slaves <laughs> from the beginning. So that culture and that that ideology is at the root and the core of, of America, period. So the fact, the only thing that's changed in this is that there's been so much more documentation of it. Right. That's the only thing that's changed. 
Nothing else has changed. If there was nobody that videotaped that, those police officers would be on the beat messing with other people at this very moment. So the, the thing is, is the systems are sometimes designed, they're flawed from the get-go. And the people that run those systems are flawed and have an objective from the get-go. And I was speaking more in perspective to quote unquote jazz music or the music that be, that came out of the oppression of the people that were brought over here uh, as slaves, you know, or against their will that created an art form or the, the, the foremothers and forefathers of an art form that we dearly love and is not respected in a certain sense of the country that created it. So like you were saying about a bird being fragile, our, our form is fragile, but it doesn't garner the support from a country <laughs> that, that helped birth it. Why is that? I don't know. There's many reasons why. Or people that, that how can I say, or the reshaping of what, it, what, what the art form actually is or about. It's completely about inclusion and being yourself at the same time. However, it's, it's not always presented that way or marketed that way or promoted that way, or that's not the narrative around it. So when I, when I say I don't believe in the system and which I, I'm, I'm in agreement with both of you on, on a lot of the points that you shared, you have to, you basically can't look for help. You have to be the, the, the fragile bird that says the hell with you all is like a, a, you know, a comic book story or something. The, the, you know, or a fairy tale, like the bird that was left to the side of the road, but for whatever, it found its own water, it found its own, you know, nourishment, it found its own nurturing, and it overcame regardless. And so sometimes that's more of the, the feeling, whether it's true or not, as an artist or a musician who's, you know, for, for all of us who we've been playing together for over 25 years at this point, It's incumbent upon us to figure it out or to continue to do it or it just won't be there. And I don't think anyone's going to kick up any dirt about it. They wouldn't kick up any dirt about George Floyd if it wasn't on two or three video cameras. It'd just be another black person that died at the hands of the police and they were just like, oh, we don't know what happened. <laughs> right, but, but what, you know, what's really interesting about the George Floyd situation to me and the, the reaction to George Floyd situation is that there's so many other examples of this, as you said. So, so many going back hundreds of years, but even just in the past couple of years, right? So this, the timing of this one is such that, first of all, people have been you know, quarantined and pent up at home for a long time. This is the kind of coming out moment, right? People wanna get out in the street, but also COVID has revealed to everybody, especially everybody in the left, but to, to everybody, the flaws in our system, not just the racial flaws, the class flaws, the public health flaws, the, the presidential flaws. I mean, all the flaws are av available for everybody to see and people are afraid and people are pissed and people see an opportunity to change the society for the better if they protest. And George Floyd is just the latest example. You know, it's, it's there on video, but other ones are there on video too. You know, it's but this one at the moment is a moment of change. That's that's kind of my main point. Like this is an opportunity because well, you had to, because people are pissed and because people can see everything that's wrong that led up to this moment. And listen, this yeah, is it's, 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 example that once, this is an opportunity for change and people are out there because they see it. Sometimes they're 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 advocating for it in maybe a less than productive way, but. The fact that people want change is is obvious. A large number of people. There's 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 one crucial. There's there's a few other crucial things. One crucial thing that that you could mention is that people don't have jobs. So basically, our country is based on economic, like I want to say servitude, but in a sense, is like no one wants to do anything that messes up their money flow because they have to pay rent or they they have uh the economic stakes are very high so now you have a nation of people a lot of people that don't have work the, like you said all of the flaws in our government all of the flaws in our leadership are all exposed 
In addition to, you had another case, what, another week or two ago that broke about the Ahmed Aubrey, the guy that got shot running? Sure. In, in, and uh, was it in Georgia? So, so you have that on the heels, which that wouldn't have come out unless the videotape got leaked. So here's another case of suppression of information uh, of a guy that gets killed and they come up with some story. So there's some collusion there. You know, a guy just is shot and then you just say, oh, yeah, he was stealing something and I shot him. And then you just, that's it. So you have that. You have everyone out of work. You have unemployment at all time highs. You have a lot of things. So people are just completely fed up. Oh man, this 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 stuff going on constantly, um, with 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 human behavior, and it's all about power and control, and it's always been about that. We're we're in something like when we play as a group or a, you know collective, we all have functions, and I think we we've, we've done this very well, and we've developed it extremely well. If one person is soloing. It's our responsibility to support them. Sometimes we like what they play. Sometimes we don't like what they play. However, we are there. Our role and our job is to support them. If I play the melody, you guys support. If Omer is taking a solo, we support. And we try to make choices that best serve what their objectives are. We're in a society now that is not representative of the people, but however, it's like an oxymoron. You know, it's, it's the fact that this is for the people, by the people, We, you know, we the people. It's not for the people. The people that are being served are the people of the elite. And it's been that way for a long time. It's just like a cancer or, or a virus or something that's grown out of control. That's that's my take or perspective on on the current state of affairs. However, um, it takes all people to institute change. Yes. It's not it's not one person or another person. However, you know I don't even know where the narrative and the numbers of the data around COVID is like it's affecting black and brown people more than than other people. Like, well, well, how is that? If you go into nutrition, if you go into like all of the other factors. And it all, for whatever reason, things always turn back around to economics. It all goes back to economics. Yes. And so, you know, like, oh, black people are equal, treated equal. I said, man, if you had slavery in your country for 300 years, there's no, if you made it equal today, it would never, it's never going to be equal. It's like an unfair advantage that you could call it equal now, but the system is designed a certain way and you just, to survive that system, it's like your chances of hitting the lottery are better. So, and I'm not, it's, it's not even being dark, but it's like America in general, and we've talked about this, brothers, America will not get better until they embrace the fact that the country was built on slave labor and and, and mistreatment of black folk, like from like the government, like from from the core. So it can't heal. Like if you never address that and where this comes from, like for kids growing up now, like Omer, you, you your son uh, Zoe is what eleven. You're muted, Omer. You're muted. Oh. Yeah, he's eleven. Yeah. How, how do you explain to him? And because you're from another culture, now this is deep. I, I I never even thought about even asking you this, but how do you explain to your son the racial history in America, in that how black people were basically not treated as people; they were like property, and that the country's economic success and power was built on the labor of 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 these people and how they're looked at in, in society. Like, have, have you had that conversation with him or if you do? I mean, like... Yeah, I mean, he, he understands the, the general, I mean, it's not like, you know, he hears about it a lot um, everywhere he's on, he, you know, but in school too. I, I talk to him about things in very basic th uh, manners uh, because uh, just to keep the human uh, situation, 
understand that we all basically basically similar and obviously you know sometimes in certain places at certain times there are situations that that make make a, a wrong situation i mean he gets it um at the same time he grows up here in a very i don't know if positive but he's i mean i let him do a lot of his thinking you know because I, i know his school is kind of getting him a certain way of the outlook um I, I honestly I don't try to to explain too much to him not on even where I come from or I mean I try to be very basic and and let him see see because it's not so complicated you know um, the thing is that I always think in terms of like I mean I mean I think our human existence is is full of challenges and problems I mean human condition so to speak um, From every aspect so I always try to think in terms of uh, solutions and and how you build you know what I mean because uh, and you were talking I mean I didn't hear all of it but obviously the system I mean I don't think there is any system that involves millions of people that is good you know I, I don't even think it's possible there is always going to be some somebody on top somebody on in the bottom it may change but It's just not I don't think it's possible uh, I think I mean I think we have to be to live a, I mean it sounds maybe like a cliche but to have a good life to just lead a, a good life to try to be and that's what I'm always talking about going back to basics your community your family your friends uh, how you view the world what, what you think how you experience life you Do you think by your by yourself for yourself um, and it starts from there basically because because like you're saying uh, to fix from the top I mean I I don't think I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't hold my breath you know what I mean to for the government or the people that control the government to admit something you know certain things and then it'll disappear you know um, I think it's all it's all up to people basically because once you start uh, waiting for 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 a certain uh, branch of the government or of the police for example to to I mean you have to you have to become the change you have to want to see a certain thing you know it's very easy to to ask it's very easy to hate first of all Uh, and to be angry I mean it's 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 uh, understandable it's it's, uh, it's the first reaction then then it's all about building you know if you don't build you you're not gonna have anything you always want other people if you want other people to build and um, fix things for you you're always in a, you're also going to be in a problem because you can never trust it to really happen you know so I It always boils down to the same thing you know you, you have your life you have your beliefs you, you support your people you, you see what you see you do what you can do and you and that's where it comes from you're you're you you're, you're the seed of something you know and with my son I think it's the same I mean he understands but the way he is with his friends the way he sees the world the way is very you know that's where it's gonna come from I don't know but listen there typical person I mean I don't believe even in a, in viewing the world in those terms as you know and it's fine I mean I agree that everybody has their own way of looking at life I'm much more the more times goes by I, I become more and more spiritual maybe and basic just uh, <laughs> it's life how you experience life you know it's uh, I don't know what I don't even you know what we see here is one thing is a material world you know and uh, music is a connection to another dimension and I think it's a maybe the true dimension uh, of our existence and I I don't want to sound too philosophical or too spiritual but at these times I just I think it's very important to to understand that uh, there are always going to be problems and there's and there's not a perfect solution for, for 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 being a human being you know so 
I know it's very general and I have no, no real answers or thoughts, but I think that building is the most important thing in life. Building communities, building your own infrastructures, uh, connecting to people, connecting really one on one, not in a in a big uh, only social media or companies or 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 government or multinational um, establishment, but actual people. You know, because because we the people starts with we the people. It's like one, two, three, four, five. You know, like this. You know. Um, I'm much more into those kind of thinking, and um, and I think I just that's the, my view of the world. You know, I, I'm I, I will never I don't think I don't have a political uh, uh, view or scientifically political way of uh, changing the world for the best. You know, I mean, uh, I think what's interesting about this this trio, uh, and and also it's probably evident to everybody who's listening to us. And it's evident, hopefully, to each other, um, is that fundamentally we actually all kind of intuitively agree about almost everything, but we have very different ways of articulating our views. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I think we we have fundamental moral agreements, we have fundamental aesthetic agreements. We, you know, we we support each other. We mostly do like everything that the other people play. <laughs> I mean, we. Uh, and and we, you know, we we make music with love together for the reason that we we feel and see the world in the same way. Nevertheless, we have very different vocabularies for talking about it. Like when I listen to Omer talk, everything that he says to me sounds profoundly political. You know, he, Omer says I, I don't have a I'm not a political you know kind of person, and and nothing that I'm I, you know I'm saying we need to. We the people is we the people. We need to build from the ground up. We need to build the communities that we want. To me, that sounds like politics. That's what politics is. Um, maybe know, when, maybe when, he, yeah. when he says when he says you know I have a spiritual view on things. I mean, our our politics needs to be spiritual. It's it's and 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 Ali saying the same thing. Like our our society is infected with with the profound, um, you know, dark truth that our, our our country was built on the on the backs literally on the backs of people that were human beings that were treated as you know subhuman and and later as second class citizens and and that's that's a fundamental spiritual wrong and moral wrong that our country has been very very slowly you know trying to address or not trying to address and there's been a battle between the people that are trying to address it and the people that are not trying to address it or trying to well, well the fact that if the status quo the same this battle has been going on for 250 something years 300 years and it continues every day and there are people on both sides battling it out and and this country has progressed in certain ways and also not progressed in other ways precisely because of who wins these battles you know, and you have people that are excellent fighters that come along, whether it's Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or Franklin Roosevelt or Abraham Lincoln or, or LBJ or, or even Obama who come along and they make some positive change. Of course, it doesn't fix the entire system. And then you have people that get disillusioned with politics precisely because nothing is perfect, like Omar was saying, and there's no political system that's perfect. Nevertheless, progress is possible when people fight and when people build, exactly as Omar was saying, from the ground up. And this is also true of our, of our music. You know, we, we do our part, you know, by having our band and, and, you know, making the great music we can and trying to go on, on tour and Ali writing music for us and Omar writing music for us and, and believing in our project. That's a kind of building. We're doing a small scale building of our own. And, and by talking about the music that we love to the, and spreading, spreading the love of this music to people, you know, whether it's, it's in our way or let's say in Winton's way or, you know, in uh, Joshua Redman's way or Kurt Rosenwinkel's way or, you know, whoever, everybody has their own artistic vision of, of how they want to see the music and, and how they want to promote the music. And we, but they're all builders, you know, as Omar was saying, they're, they're, they're builders. They're, they're, we, the people is a political document. It's a political statement. So everything we do to forward our art and to forward our vision of how we want the society to be is 
the way I see it is is political. It's so the social is political. The art, even the artistic, is political. So I think I think the danger is when we withdraw completely and we we become cynical about politics, then we just have handed over our own destiny to people that are interested in only their own, you know, their own well-being and their I, own perpetuation of the status quo. So I, I yeah, I, I think that we all see this the same, but we talk about it differently. That's basically my point. What what I mean that uh, well, it's a choice you have to make. Like what I mean, you, for example, the difference, technical difference that you have actual faith in some of the politicians, and I have less faith in the system because I think one to become one of these people, you have to go through a system and a way that basically to be elected. Not even for a, a high office, you have to be supported by people to do all of those people pretty much. But what I will say is what I'm starting to understand and the comforting thing is simply we we this like political people too. We always think that uh, yes. this, this politician made a big difference. No, we make the difference, but not only yes. by voting for them, but yes. living the life we want to live. Yes, and, and that's. I, I'm. I may. It's not about even voting. I think it's about life. Voting with your actions, doing the right thing. And it's not an easy. It's the hardest thing because you're basically taking the responsibility. And then a little bit, you know, it's it's you're passing it on, and then people up there see that and they want to get elected, so they they need to supply the the goods for you. So. It's a it's a game, you know, but but you can't just be like always following what we you know this or we need to do this or this. I I don't know. I mean, I have to analyze everything that happens. I never jump to conclusions. I mean, you know, you know, I'm, I'm I look at it very different, and I, the more you know, I progress. I I, um, I really get to basics and listening to people. Also, this disagreeing is very important. Like. You know, just the idea that people can be very think differently about life and still communicate and still uh, be a part of a society or a, is very important. I think now the, the a big problem is that people, uh, you know, everybody wants their way. You know, um, uh, it'll never be. You know what I mean? I mean, we are very close, but I mean, even if people are thinking differently, I think we should be open to to other opinions that even. I try to train myself to listen to people that are, I disagree with a lot, just to see, even if they're wrong, just to see what they, you know, how they think, where they come from. So, but I do think that, that's why I say it's not political, but, but because it's more primal or more like a level of, you know, us, you know, of what I do and take responsibility on what I do and try to learn and try to get better. Whether it's my health, my relationship with my neighbor, uh, educate my son, how I do music, how I do business, how I treat people, how I, and I, you know, it's a lot of experience, you know. But uh, um, yeah, I guess I don't know if it's clear, but it's clear. Uh... <laughs> Omer, Omer, you're very passionate, very passionate, Omer. <laughs> well, I think you have to be positive because. Um, also, too, because uh, I mean, positive in a basic way, you know, just like Ali, you know, it doesn't matter how uh, dark you get, so to speak, or, you know, sometimes you, you're down from what's going on out there, then you, you sit on the drums and, or you're, the energy that you, you generate is extremely, po very, very positive. Um, that, that's actually the story of my life. You have a lot of... But it's, stuff. It's, yeah, and I you see sometimes like, yeah, we... Positive. No, no, go. Ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just that's what I, I that's what I meant to say. So yeah, we can have these thoughts, and sometimes I, you know, I have super dark thoughts, and uh, but then at the, the end of the day, it's what you do. You know, you know, you have good energy. You 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 do whatever you can. Everybody is different too, different talents. You know. So um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much what it's about. Uh, I mean, because if you try to find those big, big solutions to, to huge problems and you may, you may get dark, you know, because you see, oh, it's so big. But then once you started, you know, living your life day, hour by hour and see what you can do and, you know, patience, you know, um, 
maybe maybe that's more of a key. I think that's what's lacking, you know, patience and and listening. And and I, I for myself for, also, you know. I have I have a, a musical challenge for for any of the people that to see this. The musical challenge is one time a week listen to an entire album of someone uninterrupted. No cell phone, no like no distractions, basically. One one album, one album for a week. And I and I feel like that will recalibrate people into actually listening or patience to absorb. It's almost like a meditation. Like if you can listen to an album like a whole entire album. And as let's say, if you even if you were cleaning your house, like that's that's worst case scenario. You had some other things or uh, you know, opening mail, but you listen to that entire album without a conversation, without being interrupted, where the only thing that's filling the space is that album. And and I I feel like for just regular listeners and musicians, like I find it with younger musicians, they don't have the patience to be able to absorb and concentrate for long periods of time. And so for the music to be effective or for it to be medicinal for people, you actually have to have the space and the patience. Yeah, that's and right. the, the, the willingness to absorb. It's like we play, you know, like, you know, I, I hear this very often to people, people always say, oh man, Ali's great. He's just, he's swinging or, you know, he's real simple. There's a lot of discipline to actually play simple, as you guys both know that. Just just in life, us having this conversation, it's discipline to listen to someone. It, it requires focus. And we're in a society, there's everything is very immediate and available, which offsets the focus. Or like, Omer, are you talking about working in a garden? And I, I have a garden that I'm working on, and it requires focus, discipline, and patience. Yeah. And I think with anyone, Aaron was sharing that he was with his parents for like 17 days. And he said, that's the first time he's been with his parents for that long of time since he was 18. So yeah. that requires like a, a calibration and a focus and a, and a different thing and a, and a reconnection just to, just to do anything sustained requires some commitment, some focus, some patience, you know, and some, and some willingness and some belief. So, yeah. uh, but, but, but I, lis listening to music is the new thing. So people say, what's new in music as one of <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's friends, uh, musician friends came to see his play. I said, yeah, it's a new thing. It's called listening. <laughs> yeah. That's why, in a way, live live shows are very important in concerts because uh, that's one time you don't have, and you also you you sense it, so it's very easy for for you to get into the music, whatever it is, and you know, I do I do see though, you know, we talk always talk about these times and technology and the generations, but yeah, obviously when you grow up around so so much, you know, video gaming, computer, social media, and I see it with my son. And younger people, I do also see a lot of people that are just like we used to be. I mean, pretty much like they have the patience. They're they're actually they really wanna, you know, that that reading a big book, a long book, is is not gonna disappear completely, you know, because or having a long conversation or, I, you know, I think there's always I, I'm I I think it's. I wouldn't say the same, but I, I, I see the young musicians that are like, if they see how we grew up or, or how we did our thing, which we were in a unique place because we were kind of a last breath of the old, uh, the old time, the old era in a way, if you, if you think about it in many, many ways. Um, it's a, they, they, it, it, I mean, the, everybody, they need it. I mean, it's not, it's not gone. You know what I mean? It's just like, you have to. Like when we grew up, every time you grow up, you have to navigate to problems, <laughs> to create art or to get to the truth. In general, it's not an easy task. You know, it's not like, oh, it's right here. I'll just 
pick it up, you know? Oh, great. I, I'm a deep person and I can play and I, I have a lot of knowledge and, and, and skills. No, you have to hone your skills. You have to get the knowledge. You have to seek the knowledge, you know? You have to move places. You have to make money. You have to go to the... I mean, it's just like, it, it's always going to be the same, you know? I mean, whatever humanity is going to tra- transform into, who knows, and our systems and our technology, we don't know. I mean, it doesn't look so promising, uh, but, but humans are humans, you know. Um, I believe in that, you know, definitely. I don't think it's stopping. <laughs> I don't think our, our humanity is going to disappear totally. Partially, yes, for sure, but it's always been like that probably. But I, I, I actually now I, I, I don't know. I go through the old materials and the old time, the way we used to do it, and I play with young musicians and I teach a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, we just have to keep it going. I, I'm just don't, don't trust it. To, it's not going to happen by itself. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that's in general. You know, it's not going to just happen. You know, it's not going to keep going because you know nobody's working and we want it to keep going. I mean, I, you know. I, I, I would, I would just second what you said in related to our, our past conversation. The battle between, you know, the selfish and the generous, the battle between the we and the other, you know, the othering tendency versus the, the unifying tendency, the battle between the serious, deep, concentrated, patient meditation and, and self-discovery and aesthetic uh, epiphany versus the superficial entertainment um, that leaves you cold in the end. That that battle is as old as humanity itself. You know, people have been fighting that battle, all those battles, for thousands of years. And in every era, people have always complained that oh shit used to be better before. <laughs> you know, and and uh, this the new the new thing is ruining people's minds. You know that that is very old. And, uh, you know, I remember the, fighting this battle when I was in high school, you know, and I, why was I the only person that was like, even uh, in the jazz, you know, in the jazz little class that I took, why was I the only one that had enough patience to sit and listen to, you know, these Miles albums for hours on end? And why did my friends, you know, lose interest quicker than me? And these are the musicians too. I mean, so... This is not, this is not something new. This is the classic, you know, Sonny Rollins just uh, had that interview that was published in the times. And he said, you know, technology is just a faster way of doing ignorant things. He quoted Aldous Huxley, like, so Sonny Rollins is quoting Huxley, a guy who was, you know, 60, 70, 80 years before him. There's examples of, you know, the Greeks f- talking about this kind of stuff. So, so we have, all we can do is fight the battle on the right side, what we feel is the right and the deep and the true, the true side, um, the inspiring side, we just got to fight for what we think is, is right. And as Omar said, perpetuate the beautiful things um, about the way we learn this music, such that the music stays alive and the society stays alive and moves in a positive direction. Okay, well, I, to, it for for musicians in a technical in a more technical t- context for for those it's like learning tradition it's like you don't learn tradition to play like the other people play before you it's like language you learn the language so you can use the language in new ways to express what your experience is mm. and some people lose sight of that i listened to omer playing on the, the the record date that we haven't released yet hopefully we'll release it from um SST in uh in Weehawken. And Omer, we are playing minority. And Omer plays some of the most, I say it should be a lesson. It should be transcribed for all basses because people that know about the acoustic bass, it has limitations. It's not a saxophone. So what Omer did is genius because he just played melodies, simple and slow, but in the context of a tune that's at a breakneck tempo. And it makes complete logical sense, and it's what you hear, and it's melodies, and it's something that you just, it's very tangible.
so technically, yeah, I mean, you want to play a whole bunch of lines, the eighth note lines on a tune that's 400 BPM. I mean, okay, but, you know, the essence, capturing the essence. So I feel like if we go back to the beginning of time, if it was, you know, chants from the, the native people in the pygmy forest that have been doing that for, who knows, thousands of years, the essence of it is to express a feeling and an emotion. And if you fast forward it to Pops or Louis Armstrong, like it's it's vocal and it's expressing a feeling, feelings and emotions. And it's like, you know, we're trans you know, transcribing. You listen to train, it's always it's the sound. It's the sound and it's the emotion in the music. So for us, I feel like that's what we carry. It's the sound and the feeling in the music. So no matter how technical you can get or how much stuff you can play, if you're not capturing that, you, you're not capturing the human spirit and what it is you're doing in a collective with other people, especially in quote unquote jazz, like people call it jazz or BAM or whatever, classic Afro or American music, whatever. It's the collective, everyone making choices and decisions that serve the bigger purpose. So like technique and, and you know velocity and all of these things, we want to go faster and faster. It's like computers, right? It's always going to be a new computer that's faster, but it's always based on how are you using it? I want to play slower <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's right. I went through my I went, I went through my playing fast period. I played quite fast. I, I want to play slower and less melodies. I'm actually writing some tunes now. Less melodies? And I'm writing. No, no, no. Not, less uh, notes. Sorry. More mel melodies are always melodies are like you know air. Yeah. But um, but uh, it's funny because I'm writing a long piece now. I have time, you know, finally I have time to uh, compose like I used to. But then I also have been writing some tunes that are super simple. Like I want to write like eight bars, 16 bars, just on purpose, just try to be very, very, very to the point, you know, and it's, it's a good, it's a good feeling. Like I just in and out, you know, and um, it's a nice, I mean, it's not an exercise, but it feels like a moment that I'm, I'm really trying to, uh, to just, just hit it and quit, you know? Uh, not too much development. Not you know, it's a, it's an interesting process. You know, uh, I was just gonna add, maybe add one thing to what Ali was saying about tradition. You don't listen to tradition in order to you know, recapitulate it, but to to perpetuate it and to to add to it. Um, I did I did a little Zoom, kind of like online uh, chat about this album that Walter Smith recorded, it was a Walter Smith album, just a live album that we did with Walter and Ambrose and, and Marcus Gilmore and, and uh, uh, 19, 2008 or 2009. It was just basically a gig that, that Xavier recorded for Space Time Records. <laughs> That's our boy, Xavier. Um, and it turned into a record and, and I didn't really remember it very well, um, but apparently it's a record that a lot of young jazz students really like. Um, so Walter, who's now teaching at Berkeley, decided to have a little online session about the album and a lot of students, you know, 100 something students tuned in and some fans and asked questions as we were listening to the album online. And, uh, and you know, Ambrose, we were all there to answer questions and a lot of people were asking Ambrose a similar question like how how did you develop such a unique approach and uh, you know what is the secret to being an original and I I, I kind of liked his answer he basically just said listening to the masters he, he wouldn't he kind of refused to go beyond that level like the in other words the way to be original is to listen to the masters that came before you and when pushed on it he said, you know, just look, I just, I'm transcribing a Clifford Brown solo today. And he pulled out his transcription that he's been working on that day. He's like, I've only been trying to do one thing since I started playing this instrument, which is listen to all the masters that came before me. And the end result of that is sounding like a complete original. 
and he kind of just in, intentionally reversed the logic, right? He just flipped it on people and, and left it for the students to figure out the rest. Yeah, I find the, I find it the hardest thing to, when I teach and I don't teach a lot, that point is always like the hardest thing for a lot of people to understand to musician, musician. It's like, it's painful. You know? <laughs> they, they want a better, a easier answer. Also, it, it's counterintuitive, but, but I think you also, like I remember myself, I, from a young age, I, uh, I had this in, 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 in intuitive sense to like, oh yeah, I have to check out the basics, even though there's a, a lot of other stuff going on. But I mean, it kind of has to come, I think people gravitate towards it naturally. It's hard to tell people because there's a lot of people who just try to, students would be very frustrated, but I, how how do, how can you sound like yourself and you, so to speak, imitate or listen to other people? That's the whole thing. But it's it, it's one thing you, you do have to understand if you want to sound like yourself. Well, you can only sound like yourself. That's what Max Roach taught me. Exactly. Anyway, so just sound right. better, so, like your be sound like your better self. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you that's that's a given. Now, which how you develop that, and and listening to masters, yes, obviously, but getting into the essence and the in the the essence of why they sound the way that they sound, or like the the concepts of why they sound the way that they sound. Or their actual sound, like, you know. I, I see a lot of people, and it's sound like just on their instrument. And, and and we're speaking of, let's say we're talking about drums, like drum sound is like that's what the instrument is. It's sound. It's pure sound. Oh. And it's like how how can you create the sound that you hear once you get to a certain level? Let's say you, you're proficient on the instrument. Now, how can you? Get out of the instrument the sound that you actually hear in your in your head. Like whether it's symbol, it's not the symbols, it's not any of that. I've played, as you guys know, I've played drum kits from all over the place. But at the end of the day, it's like, okay, do you sound does it sound like the drum kit or does it sound like the person playing the drum kit? Doesn't matter. It's the sound that you create. Or Great basses, they sound like them. They can play bass du jour. They sound like them when they play, you know, their sound, like they get a sound. I'll speak of a young bass player today that I find is like an amazing skill. I was just like crazy. I mean, he's young, he's younger, he's younger than us, but a Yasushi Nakamura. I mean, this guy picks up random basses and it sounds like it's like his bass like <laughs> he was like well, Vio, Vio is the master of that Vio is the ultimate master of that well, if he's that's another that's a whole I say say a booty of a different thing <laughs> that's, that's a whole that's a whole nother universe I mean Reginald Vio is just pure music man it doesn't matter what he does he just he's just music if he plays trombone if he's singing like people don't know he's a great singer he, he's just like He's just music. Whatever he does is music. Man, I gotta play you something that he he wrote. If he'll let me, if let me get a copy of it. He did some Middle Eastern thing, bro. <laughs> like oud, like like the oud sound. Like I don't know how he got this sound, but it was like some middle. And he's singing on it and playing, bro. You would never. You'd be like, bro, who are these cats? Like, listen, did he like, release listen. it? Huh? Is it released or just some? Oh, it's not released. Course? It was just in his own personal archive. Right. So like, like, listen to Billy Higgins play guitar and sing Bossa Nova. You know, like he's like, you're like, wow, he's playing Bossa Nova guitar and singing. He sounds like a Brazilian cat, except his Portuguese is not doesn't actually make sense, but it, it sounds beautiful. That's even that's even more legit. <laughs> his, his Portuguese doesn't make complete sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's just fake Portuguese, but it's br it's brilliant. <laughs> sounds sounds perfect. I, I want to see that. You have it, or you have? Oh, it's on. Yeah, it's on, on some albums. He he actually did record himself. I, 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 yeah, I got it. I got it on a Billy Higgins CD. I don't. I have to hear that. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, brothers, it's always a pleasure and a blast. And 
I, I think you guys summed up a lot of things and 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 expressed a lot of information and feelings that will only uplift and let us be a little more introspective and and more in tune to the world we want to see and the, and the world that we want to be in. So I, I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for your brotherhood. And and I will see you on the bandstand very soon. I'm sure that. Hey, Jax. Hey, Jax. Hey. Yeah, man. Thank you. Enjoy your you Saturday. Thank you. Cats. Enjoy your Saturday. Good to see you. Thank you. You too. Bye. It's so funky.